real YouTubist. Have nice hair. This is inclusive of this particular YouTubist. I'm getting really fast at it. Um, I woke up like this. No judgment, please. So, there I was. Um, doing, you know, tier list videos, etc, 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 etc. Um, and I thought it could be really interesting to try and make a tier list of the Pokemon types. Because typing is something that's, you know, pretty crucial in Pokemon. Um, you know, like the, the typing of a Pokemon very much influences its viability. It's not the only thing that influences it, but it has a big role in it. Um, and different types are like not... Every type is not created equal, you know? Um, and so I thought it could be interesting to talk about it. Just to be clear, this is my opinion. This is my opinion. That's this my is opinion. not uh, objective. This is just subjective. It's not fact. So if you don't agree, that's fine. Um, just want to get that out of the way. Because at least when I get my angry comments about how I, where I put things now, at least I know that I did all I could to make it clear that it's just my opinion. And that there's not really an objective way of ranking these things. Like, you could talk about, like, weaknesses and resistances, but that, like... It's all, everything's inter interrelated, so like you can't talk about like just weaknesses and resistances in a vacuum because having a resistance to one type might be val more valuable than having resistance resistance to another type. Anyway, I woke up like this. Um, thank you so much for uh, all the support, by the way, guys. We're now over 200,000 subscriber. Um, so yeah, make sure to like and subscribe and maybe hit the bell. Oh, maybe hit the bell. I don't know. If you want to hit the bell? Anyway, so there it was. Trying to uh, make a tier list and I was like... So somebody told me that I wouldn't have to upload the images one by one if, if, um, I think, 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 I wouldn't have to upload the images one to one, by, like one by one to Cheerless Maker if instead what I did was I put them all in a folder first and then uploaded them all at once. So I tried that. It didn't work. And then I tried doing it one by one and I realized it looked like this. This was supposed to be steel. So, uh, I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. So I found somebody else's tier list. Um, shout outs to, I don't know who made this, but whoever made this, thank you. Um, Pukumuku, Pukumulukas. That's cool. Um, anyway, I, I was like, okay, so we have to deal with the symbols rather than the, like, um, rather than the, the names. However, I realize this is in alphabetical order. It's, uh, we'll just go through them all at once, just so we're all on the same page. Bug, dark, dragon, electric, fairy, fighting, fire, flying, ghost, grass, ground, ice, normal, poison, psychic, rock, steel, water. Okay, so, and question mark type is not here. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. We're gonna go through these, I'm gonna rank them, and then that's it. And then you guys can yell at me in the comments. But yeah, anyway, so with all the, uh, out of the way, let's get started. The first type on our list, because it's the first type alphabetically, is the bug type. Um, the bug type has a couple weaknesses, actually many weaknesses. It's weak to fire, it's weak to rock, it's weak to flying. Um, it's resisted by fairy, it's resisted by steel, it's resisted by fire. It's not resisted by rock. It's not resisted by dragon. It's a bad type, I'm gonna be honest. Bugs, the bug is probably the worst type in the game. Um, it's definitely a D tier type. Sorry, A drive. Sorry, A drive in the hashtag A drive army. But yeah, bug type is, I think, objectively the worst type. It hits psychic for super effective. It hits dark for super effective damage. Both of those are really valuable. Uh, and kidding grass as well is nice. But the weaknesses are pretty bad. Like fire flying and rock are all especially bad. Many uh, bug types have four times weaknesses, including the best bug types. Um, and a lot of them actually capitalize on other Pokemon to kind of try and circumvent some of their weaknesses, but Volcarona is weak to, four times weak to Rock, Caesar and Durant are both weak to, uh, actually Caesar. <laughs> Caesar and Durant are both four times weak to Fire, sharing a typing. Um, those are the best bug types off the top of my head. Uh, I'm sure there are other ones that are good, like, I honestly don't know, like, bug types, the bug, Caesar and Volcarona were like the best ones for a while, and yeah, now Durant has a moment in the spotlight as well, but, yeah. The good thing is that bug, its max move type is pretty good, like, because it lowers special attack, but it's hurt by the fact that, um, yeah, bug is not, like, a type that many Pokemon need to run. Some, po like, some Pokemon, like, Durant will run max, max bug, but it's probably up there with max normal is one of the typings I see the least on Pokemon in terms of their max moves. Like, even if you don't run it, mo like, the only real bug moves that are used are, like, U-turn and occasionally some other stuff as well, but, yeah, bug is not typically thought of as a very good type. Okay. Next up, we have Dark. So, Dark is weak to Fairy, Fighting, um, and Bug. It resists, it's immune to Psychic. Immunities are really nice. It resists Ghost. Um, yeah. Dark is an interesting one. I'm going to put the Dark type in the B tier. Um, 
the thing is, well, maybe it should be C tier. Like, I, the thing is that a lot of dark type Pokemon are really good. Like Hydreigon um, and Tyranitar and even Crocodile isn't bad and Bisharp isn't bad. Um, like, there are a lot of good dark type Pokemon, but I don't know if that means the type is necessarily that good. Although, honestly, like, the ability to be... Actually, yeah, I'm gonna put it in a B tier. The immunity to Psychic is really nice, and the ability to hit Ghost types for super effective damage is also really nice. Um, Dark is the only type that purely resists Ghost, I think, um, off the top of my head. Uh, the, other, the only other type that can handle Ghost types easily is the normal type, who is immune, thanks to Steel's nerf in Generation... Uh, whatever? Six? Generation six? Yeah. Um... So yeah, Dark type is overall, I would say, a pretty solid... It's like a solid type, right? It has a lot of good attacks in Soccer Punch, Knock Off, Crunch, Assurance, Dark Pulse, like... And a lot of Dark type Pokemon have seen success over the years. Hydreigon won two World Championships, Tyranitar won a World Championship. It's a good type for sure. Like, no one is... No one is knocking the Dark type. Maybe... Yeah. The, I would say Dark type, if it weren't for the Fairy type, would be A tier, probably. Um, although now that... Yeah, Fairies were added when Steel's were, like, weakened, so... Um, it kind of balances out, but yeah, I think dark type is, is pretty fair there. Next up, we have dragon. Dragon, in my opinion, is an A tier type. Um, dragon is only weak to dragon, ice, and fairy, which, you know, is like being weak to yourself is always interesting because like dragons inherently counter other dragons, um, which is volatile for sure. Uh, when, it's volatile when you're using the same dragon. Um, dragon was the S tier type before fairies were introduced. Fairy was, I think, introduced in part because dragon was so broken. Um, yeah, having only two resistances in Fairy and Steel is kind of extremely strong. Um, and yeah, I don't think it's a coincidence that like there's almost always a dragon at the top of the metagame with Garchomp dominating for a while um, in like 2012 and 2014. And then in 2015, was there a dragon? I don't remember. In 2011 and 2012, we had High Dragon do really well as well. Um, in 2013, we didn't have that many dragon types. Latios, though, won the World Championships, so maybe I should shut up. And then, yeah, 2014, Garchomp was pretty dominant. Um, in 2015, I don't remember, I don't think, that was, there wasn't that many dragon types, like Charizard X was used a little bit, um, but there wasn't, I don't think there were that many. 2016, Mega Rayquaza won the World Championships. Um, 2017, I don't think we had that many good dragons, as I recall. And then, yeah, I don't know, 2019, Rayquaza was back. Dragon is consistently a really good type, one of the best in my opinion. Um, well, the strengths of Dragon are, number one, a lot of the users have really good base stats. Garchomp, like I mentioned, Hydreigon, like I mentioned, Rayquaza, like I mentioned, they all have incredible base stats. Ultra Necrozma also uh, almost won the World Championships in 2019, finishing second. Um, so, yeah, overall, it's a, it's a really good type, and um, even though it's weak to, like, the weakness to Fairy honestly sucks for the Dragon type, but they were, Fairy was added to counter Dragon because Dragon was so broken. Um, and I feel like Dragon is a fair type, in, in my opinion, like, at least nowadays, because, like, you have an immunity type, you have, a, like, one of the best types in the game, Steel, is a resistance to it. Um, and Ice is a pretty common type as well. Like, Ice is a, is a really good type because it hits Grass, Ground, and Dragon, which we'll touch on later. Um, but Ice types always have, like, find a way in the metagame, whether it's via, like, bulky Water types or whether it's... Normally, not that many Ice types actually find their way into the, the, um, the game, but, uh, yeah, even still, like... Ice, ice is always a prevalent type, in part because of the prevalence of dragons, and also because there's because of Icy Wind and Ice Beam and, and how good, excuse me, those moves are, and often their wide distribution. Electric, I'm adding in the A tier. I was torn on whether to put in an A or S, but I think A is fair. Electric only has one immunity in ground, uh, or is all, sorry, has only one weakness in ground. Everything else is neutral on electric, um, and that's very valuable. Uh, yeah, like some Pokemon like Electros have no weaknesses because it's just an electric type with Levitate. Uh, and that's, I think, really interesting. Electric is also a pretty solid offensive type, especially in the current metagame. Um, although it's only super effective against like flying and water and... Is that it? I have to look at the list. Yeah, it looks like it's only super effective against flying and water and it's resisted by dragon, um, electric, grass, and its immunity is ground. So like it has more resistance to the slash immunities than weaknesses. Um, but the real thing about electric is, yeah, like that it only has one typing and, or it only has one weakness and the typing itself is solid offensively because you can hit like, like water and flying are common types in almost every metagame, I think. Um, and so having a move, like having the ability to hit those Pokemon for super effective damage is very valuable, especially when you're not that concerned on the defensive end. 
The best electric types probably are Tapu Koko, who has, you know, won worlds two times in a row in 17 and 18, uh, thanks to electric terrain powering it up even more. And then Ro the Rotom forms are also some of the best electric types. Um, they pair electric with other, and uh, with Levitate, first of all. So basically, you don't have any weaknesses from electric, and you only get the resistances, which is very valuable. Um, so, and yeah, depending on the form, like, you will, like, you'll have less weaknesses, right? So like Rotom Wash, for example, is not weak to electric and is only weak to grass, which is for like, just as an example, a very, very powerful Pokemon. Um, Rotom Heat, as opposed to being a pure fire type, you know, gets a resistance to electric, which it wouldn't have otherwise. Um, I guess electric doesn't give you that many resistances because, you know, it's only resistant to electric and that's it. It's only resistant to electric. So that's the balance for the weakness. But um, yeah, I think the real reason to use electric is the offensive coverage that it gives you. Um, and yeah, like the fact that like you, most moves are neutral against you, which is nice. If you're a pure electric type, that is. And uh, to be fair, a lot of electric types are dual types, but still. Also, Raichu won the world championships in 2016. I kind of blanked on that. So electric can also be used as a supporting type. Toga tomorrow has a lot of success in 2017. Um, yeah, the ability to nuzzle. Thunderous is obviously, I'm missing some crucial examples. Holy cow. Thunderous is one of the best Pokemon of all time. It won the world championships as well. Um, yeah, like electric type Pokemon can be used offensively, like I mentioned, with Tapu Koko and Rotom. The Rotom goes both ways, defensive or support, or it can be used as a more supportive role. Raichu, Pachirisu, Togedemaru. Um, yeah, it helps that a lot of electric types have either Lightning Rod or Volt Absorb as well. Um, yeah, and Thunderous. Yeah, electric's a really good type. Next up, we have Fairy. This is a clear S tier type, in my opinion. Fairy is, in my opinion, too broken and should be balanced. I would like to see maybe a weakness added. I think Fairy should either be weak or at least neutral to Bug. And I think Bug should resist Fairy just to balance out the types a little bit. Um, fairy resists Fighting, it resists Bug, it resists Dark, um, it's immune to Dragon. Um, and its only weaknesses are Steel, which is, you know, the main weakness, and Poison. Um, and it's not very effective against Fire, Steel, Poison. And I think that's it, yeah. It's, it's a broken type. It's actually, it's actually insane. When they added the Fairy type, like, it was immediately one of the best types, and there weren't even that many users. Like, we had back in the day, like... Mega Mawile, Ray won a regional with Wigglytuff. I don't think anyone expected that just because it was like fairy type and had competitive Um, because it doesn't have that much else going for. I mean, it has good coverage, but like it's not the kind of Pokemon you'd expect to be winning regionals. Um, Xerneas, the most broken Pokemon of all time, of course, uh, in my opinion, very, very powerful, very, very strong. Um, yeah, I don't know. Fairy is kind of too broken. Uh, fairy, it's it's really strong because it has one of the best offensive moves in the game in Moonblast, and it also has Dazzling Gleam. A lot of fairy types having Moonblast is scary because like um, the it's it's one of the it's like the strongest norm, one of the strongest moves you can go with almost no drawback and a good secondary effect. If it's a 95 base power, 100% accurate move that drops special attack, which is really strong and it's very spammable. In other words, like you can just click Moonblast, Moonblast a lot of the time and there's no drawbacks. You also have Dazzling Gleam having a pretty wide distribution on special fairy types, being able to hit, you know, use spread moves, and player of is also a very strong fairy type. Um, notable fairy types, like I mentioned, we had uh, Mega Mawile back in the day, Wigglytuff had some usage, Mimikyu is a really good Pokemon uh, with a very good ability, Xerneas, of course, the most broken Pokemon ever, Whimsicott fills a support role, but also, yeah, can do others, like, can can do offensive damage, because it's, like, you're in focus dash on it a lot of the time. Um, oh, yeah, overall, just, like, a really, 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 really strong type. Next up, we have Fighting. Put fighting in the B tier. Um, I like fighting types personally. Um, they have, you know, some history of doing well at the World Championships. Just off the top of my head, I know that Hitmontop won in... Or, sorry, Conkleder won in 2011. Um, Hitmontop got second in 2012. In 2013, Conkleder won in 2014. Mega Lucario got second. 2015, no. 2016, Hitmontop won again. 2017, well, it was three fairies that year, so... Yeah, no, and then... Um, yeah, fighting is a good type. Um, it helps that, like, a lot of... Like, in a lot of years, Pokemon that are weak to fighting are popular. For example, Tyranitar is normally popular when it's legal. Um, Incineroar is going to be popular when it's legal. Uh, Porygon 2 was legal in 2017, etc., etc. Like, there's a lot... And, and then it also helps that there's a lot of good fighting types. Fighting is a, is a type that, um, like, in, t in general, is, like, pretty bulky. Like, a lot of the users are pretty bulky. Scrafty comes to mind. Hitmontop comes to mind. Even Pokemon like Machamp have won the World Championships and Top Cut and Masters. Machamp won in Seniors, but it's Top Cut and Masters. Um, it won in Seniors on a Trick Room team, and I believe it was Choice Scarf um, on the non-Trick Room team. Maybe I should put Fighting in the A tier. You have Terrakion, who's done very well over the years. Um, 
There's a lot of good fighting types. Yeah, now that I like the more and more I think about it. Drakion, Conkleder, him on top, Machamp, Scrafty. I'm sure I'm missing some crucial ones. Lucario did pretty well for itself. Yeah, there's a lot of good fighting type Pokemon. Um, yeah, so... But overall, as a typing, so fighting hits dark for super effective, um, it hits rock for super effective, it hits ice for super effective, it hits normal for super effective, it hits steel for, I think we should move, I think fighting should be moved up, actually. Uh, it hits a lot of Pokemon for super effective. Normal, hang on, we'll go through one at a time. Um, dark, rock, ice, normal, steel. But the resistances are pretty numerous as well. It's resisted by fairy, bug, flying, it, just, it doesn't work on ghost types at all. Um, resisted by poison and psychic. So I think it, that was five weaknesses and six resistances. And in exchange, it resists... Yeah, I'm gonna move it down again, actually. It resists, um... Bug? Does fighting resist bug? I actually don't know. <laughs> Wait. Bug. I never know bugs typing. Can I bug buzz a him on top? I don't think so. Can I bug buzz Scrafty for neutral? Yeah. It resists fighting, uh, fighting resists bug. Um... Which is very interesting. Uh, it resists bug, it resists rock, it resists... That's it, it only resists bug and rock? Is that literally it? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, that B tier seems fair for it. Sorry, I know a lot of this stuff intuitively, but when I actually have to, like, list everything at once, it can be kind of tricky. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, fighting is a good type. It has a lot of weaknesses that it hits, but it also has a lot of Pokemon that resist it, as well as having an immunity and ghost type. And the resistances on its side are not super strong however a lot of the users have really good bulk and also many fighting types get great coverage moves ice punch is very common on fighting types um rock moves are common um yeah lots of them get forms of priority so i would say that like the users of fighting types are slightly better than fighting itself like maybe if you were to think about like pokemon as, as opposed to just pure typings i'd probably put fighting in the a tier like fighting types are a tier but fighting as a type is probably a b tier if that makes sense i'm not sure if it does i'm also not convinced we're gonna have a c tier um Next up, we have Fire. I'm putting Fire in the A tier. I think Fire is a really good type. Uh, fire is super effective against what? Um, bug, Grass, Ice, Steel. Steel is the big one. Steel being one of the best types in the game. Um, and it's resisted by Dragon, uh, Water, Rock. Water, Rock, Dragon. Is that it? Looks like it. Yep. I'm glad I can see them all in front of me. So yeah, Fire is a really good type. The other thing that we have to note is that Fire resists... Fairy, which is a huge one. It's one of the, th what, three resistances? Fairy, steel, poison, and fire. Um, it resists fairy. It resists its own type, which is fire. Um, it resists bug. It resists grass. Uh, it resists ice. And that's it. Yeah. So overall, it's a really solid type. Fire is important because of steel types. Uh, steel types uh, being very, very important in a metagame. Well, in any metagame, I'm just going to be honest. Fire types normally find their way into doing well. Incineroar has had a lot of success. Heatron has had a lot of success. Like, a lot of success. Um, yeah, in any metagame where Steel-types are prevalent, Fire-types will probably also be there. Um, Rotom Heat is, like, somewhat decent in most metagames. Um, has had success as well. But yeah, Fire being able to resist Fairies and hit Steel-types. Like, I feel like Fairy, Dragon, Steel is often talked about, but Fire is almost, like, in that in that typing triangle, you know? Like, it's very close because of the resistance to Fairy and the super effective against Steel. Um, I'm going to give you a spoiler. Steel is, another S Steel is the other S-tier uh, type in my opinion. Um, so yeah, having like have, being positive against both of those typings is pretty valuable. Um, Charizard is also currently very good in the current metagame and it's partially because like, and Torkoal's really good. Yeah, Fire is definitely an A tier type. It's a very spammable attack type um, and Sun teams are also very, in most metagames, they're pretty um, viable, I would say. Like not in every metagame, of course, because it depends on what setters you have available and such, but yeah. Um, Primal Groudon won the world championships last year. Um, Charizard does want a regional this year. Uh, it's, it's just, a, it's a, it's an overall really good type for the reasons I listed. Next up is flying. So I, I honestly have a ton of trouble with flying. Like I've been, th I, like I have no idea where to put it. So I'm gonna have to think out loud for a second. Let's go through the typing first of all. So flying is weak to electric. It's weak to, um, ice. It's weak to rock. Ice, rock, electric. Okay. It's resisted or it, it's super effective against fighting bug, grass, Okay, and it is resisted, wait, it's resisted by electric, um, rock, steel, is that it, electric, rock, steel, yeah, so flying is tough, like, 
flying is the one I knew I was going to have the hardest time with. Um, because honestly, I'm having trouble specifically because of Max Airstream, because Max Airstream is such a powerful, powerful move um, that it makes Pokemon like Braviary and Togekiss like actually pretty viable. However, flying as a typing, like it's weak to rock, uh, which is a very, very common type. It's resisted by rock. It's resisted by steel. Um, it's resisted by electric. It's weak to electric, which are like all pretty good types. And the super effective types are like fighting, grass, bug. Like those, the fighting is good and grass is good, but like they're not super common. But Max Airstream is so good. I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm going to put flying at the end. We're going to come back to flying. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, next up we have ghost. Uh, I'm going to put ghost in the B tier. This is this one's a bit easier for me. Um, the reason ghost is B tier is because defensively it kind of, it's not great. Um, it resists fighting and normal. Um, does it resist bug? I'm pretty sure it resists bug. Yeah, it resists bug. Um, Resist bug, it's resist, uh, it's immune to fighting, it's immune to normal, and it resists poison as well. Um, so the resistances are okay, however, like, normal fighting, bug, and poison are, like, not the most common types, and, um, it's weak to dark and ghost, which is, like, good for weaknesses, like, it doesn't have that many weaknesses. However, the real thing about ghost type is it's very, it's very spammable. Maybe it should be A tier, actually. Like, because only ghost and normal, or only normal and dark offer any kind of safety, like, switch into it. Um, but dark and normal are both pretty common typings. Though they're not that common. I don't know. Ghost is tricky. A lot of ghost type users are pretty frail, but they've seen decent success, like Chandler. Oh, wait. Dusclops is a ghost type. Yeah, Ghost should be A type, or A tier. Um, yeah, Ghost should definitely be A tier, now that I think about it more. Because, like, you can use it offensively on a Pokemon like Gengar or Chandler, both of whom have seen success throughout VGC, or, yeah, especially Mega Gengar. Um... Uh, or Lunala, who won the World Championships last year, because, yeah, it's a very spammable attack, um, kind of similar to Fire, because it only has two things that can switch into it and not take, like, and take neutral, or only two types take resisted or no damage from it, and so that makes it very easy to click, um, and it can, the ghost types are interesting because they can be both bulky or offensive, like, Gengar is typically not bulky, although people have run bulky Mega Gengar before, um, but it can be offensive as well, right, you don't need to run bulky ghost types, um, or it can be bulky as well. You don't need to run offensive ghost types. And some Pokemon can do both. Like, Lunala is both bulky and offensive. Although that's a bit different because it's restricted. Um, many Shirkrim setters are ghost type. Uh, like, Jellicent, which won the first regional in Sword and Shield, was very good. And, you know, it was a bulky ghost type. But it also had Water Spout for good damage output. Um, and it also had Recovery and Strength Sap. Um, yeah, Ghost is a really good type. Dusclops is probably... You could make a case that Dusclops is the best mod in the format right now. Um, in my opinion. So... Yeah, like, I don't know. Ghost types are actually really strong. The more I think about it. <sighs> okay, next up we have Grass type. Grass type is interesting because there's a couple users who are, like, really good. Specifically, like, Amoongus, Venusaur. It's kind of it. Let's go through the typing. Grass is weak to fire. It's weak to um, bug. It's weak to ice. It's weak to poison. And it's weak to flying, which is quite a few weaknesses. It's super effective against water. Um, it's also super effective against ground and rock. And it's resisted by poison, steel, fire, flying, dragon. I think that's it. Bug. Lots of resistances. I'm going to put Venusaur in the C tier. I'm going to put, I'm sorry, green, green in the grass in the C tier. This is hard for me because, like, I feel like it maybe should be higher up. Um, like, maybe it should be B tier. It's honestly really tricky. Like, the thing is that the best grass types that come to mind are Amoongus and Venusaur. And those are both part poison, and they also have, like, they're also sleepy boys, which makes them, like, a lot better. Pokemon like Breloom don't see much usage in VGC. I'm trying to think, what are the other grass types? Like, Rillaboom is actually a pretty good Pokemon, but I think it's not because of the grass typing and more because of the other things that it can do. Like, I'm not sure how much the typing actually helps it. Grass is, it's, like, it's tough because, like, it is a good type in, in the sense that, like, water, like, it's a good counter type because... Some Pokemon like Gastrodon and Rotom Wash, both of whom are currently very popular. Um, they, um, they're only weak to Grass type, and well, Rotom to Mold Breaker, Excadrill, but yeah, like I don't know. Like, so you need Grass type Pokemon on a team sometimes. Did we use Grass types? There's Whimsicott, but like I feel like Whimsicott, it doesn't even normally run a Grass move. It really functions as a Prankster Tailwind bot. Is there any other good grass types that I'm forgetting about? 
I'm actually gonna go to the list. I'm gonna look. I need to look at grass types. Like executor is broken, obviously, but um, I'm gonna look at the list. I'm even gonna. Okay, let's see. Ludicolo's not amazing right now. Um, Leafeon's like okay. Ferrothorn's pretty good. Maybe I should move grass up a tier. Sarina's not bad. The apples. Hmm. Let's see if I'm missing any. Maybe I should move it up a tier. Executor, Tangela, Jumpluff. A Boma Snow, Rotom Cut, Superior. There are some good grass types. Chesnaught. Deki Dewey, I guess. Kartana type. Oh, Tapu Bulu. Yeah, we have to move it up. Okay, yeah. Okay, fine. It's a B tier. It's a B tier type. I feel like I might not have a C tier. I feel like we're going to have to get rid of the C uh, We're going to get rid of the D tier and just do C tier. But okay, it's okay. We'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, grass type. Like, when I look at the users and when I realize a lot of them are actually pretty good. I don't know. It, I, I felt like I couldn't. I can't put it in the C tier. It's just not fair. You know what? Yeah, let's just get rid of the D tier right now. I feel like this is going to give me a, a, a more accurate list. Um. Cause there's nothing worse than bug and yeah like i can always add it back in um the reason why i put grass type in the b tier rather than the c tier which is now the d tier um is because grass is it's actually like offensively even though there's a lot of resistances it's still a pretty good type because a lot of the users like just make first of all a lot of the users have good coverage um in last generation we saw tepa blue and cartana had both grass and fighting which gave good coverage versus a lot of pokemon and Given how good Cortana was and that it really was a grass type, and also given that Tapu Bulu was, in my opinion, pretty good and had decent success as well, and it was like, those were both Pokemon that were grass types first, whereas Amoongus, you maybe could argue, is more of a poison type first. So actually, no, I think with both Amoongus and Venusaur, they also function as grass types first. So although grass, like, on paper is not amazing, I think the fact that it, the, the, like, the fact that it's water for super effective is pretty valuable. It's one of water's two weaknesses, um, which makes water one of the best types as well. Um... Yeah, that's kind of valuable. And then, yeah, they can be used. A lot of them have good natural bulk. Yeah, a lot of them have really good natural bulk. And a lot of them are dual types as well, which helps out a lot. So overall, yeah, I feel like we had to put grass in the B tier. I, uh, yeah. Okay, next up is ground. What are we going to do with the ground? I'm going to put ground in the... Okay, wait, let's think about this. So ground is resisted or is weak to grass, water, ice... That's it. It's super effective against... I'm going to pull this up. This is helpful when we look at all of them. Um, it's super effective against electric, fire, rock, steel. And it's resisted by... Grass, bug, and it's immune to fly... Or flying is immune, and that's it. I think ground is a pretty good type. I'm putting it in the A tier. Yeah, ground's immunity to electric is pretty nice. It's one of the few types that it can do... Like, or that has, it's the only type that doesn't immunity to electric, which is very valuable because for like electric specifically because of the, like the move Volt Switch. Um, that's a move that is often used on when electric types are good. Like many electric types were on Volt Switch. And so having a, 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 the ability to be immune to that is pretty good. Um, also the ability to be immune to Thunder Wave was very valuable back in the day. Um, when Thunder is really popular and it still helps out now. Like certain teams take advantage of Thunder Wave or Nuzzle or things like that. And yeah. Obviously, there are some ways to still have ground types be paralyzed, like Lair and Body Slam and um, GMX Full Crash. But for the most part, the immunity to Electric is one of the best immunities you can have up there with Dragon. Um, so, uh, yeah, ground types are also typically pretty bulky, um, and they normally like normally like a ground type that has good stats will do very well. Garchomp and Landorus T are the biggest examples, in my opinion. I'm gonna look through the list, see if I'm missing anything else. Rhyperior is currently really good, um, despite its weaknesses. The ability helps out a lot. Um, yeah, Groudon obviously is very, very good in the formats where it's allowed. Mamoswine, One Worlds, Excadrill is really good. Um, yeah, ground types are typically physically po physical Pokemon, and they're typically physically offensive. We've even seen Mudsdale get some use in this year and a couple years ago. Um, yeah, so overall ground types like are, they're bulky. Uh, they're naturally bulky. Almost almost all of them are actually, yeah, pretty, they're pretty decent in natural bulk, but they also have good offensive capabilities, um, and they hit things pretty hard. They also, especially this generation, have good spammable moves and high horsepower, which is another, not no, no drawback move because it can miss, but um, it's similar to moon, belt, moon Blast, which is just like, it's just a very clickable move. And yeah, ground types are normally capable, they're normally physical attackers. Oftentimes they'll boost their physical attack in some way, having access to Swords Dance. Almost all the ground types I listed that were good have access to Swords Dance. Um, yeah. And special ground types get access to Earth Power, which is good. Gastrodon, I totally forgot about. Gastrodon really pairing well with the water typing of Gastrodon's other type. Um, 
Yeah, ground is actually a really good type because if it's like a lot of the users are very naturally bulky and um, the resistances are good. The resistance to rock is really useful because you don't want you don't, you want to discourage your opponent from just clicking rock slide a lot of the time. Um, ground is a very good offensive type, despite the fact that it has some resistances. Like bug bug is almost never used, and off like the bug types that are used are not like Caesar. Volcarona, Durant don't resist ground anyway, which is nice. Um, so you basically just have to worry about grass and flying and levitate Pokemon unless you're using Excadrill. And so having two functional resist, one resistance and one immunity is very doable. So yeah, I don't put ground into the S tier because like it has a lot of weaknesses like water, grass, ice. Those are all types that are fairly common in competitive play. And so um, yeah, I won't put ground in the S tier, but it's probably it's upper A tier for sure. Next up, we have ice. <sighs> I think Ice is a C-tier typing. It's good offensively, or it's important offensively, but yeah, I think it's probably not... Like, the Ice types are not very good for the most part. Um, ice is weak to what? Uh, fire. It's weak to Fighting. It's weak to Rock. It's weak to Steel. Um, is that it? Fire, Fighting, Rock, Steel. It's super effective against Grass, Dragon, Ground. And it's resisted by Fire... Um steel water it's like like on paper it's not that bad but like ice type pokemon are just super frail they have seen success in the past like lonely nine tails is pretty decent in 2017 um lapras is the big one right now lapras is actually not bad at all i think a lot of like a lot of what an ice type needs is actually you know what i lied I'm also not convinced we're gonna have a C tier. I'm also not convinced we're gonna have a C tier. Bug is D, Ice is C. This is this makes more sense to me. Um, because the thing is that if an Ice type Pokemon has a good dual type, it can be good. Like Lapras and Mamoswine are the two, and Ninetales, I guess, are the biggest examples of that. Even Weavile's seen some play before. They're not not much, I'll be honest. Um, the thing about Ice is that it's it's much better than Bug because the weaknesses that it hits are very important. Dragon is the main one, uh, but Ground and Ground and Grass are also pretty good to hit. Um. Yeah, Ice just has a lot of wasted potential, in my opinion. Yeah, Ice has a lot of potential, in my opinion. It just feels wasted. Um, however, yeah, like, when an Ice type is good, it's very good. Lapras is one of the best Pokemon in the format right now, being able to set up Aurora Veil. And actually, giving Ice types Aurora Veil, I think, helped a lot. I think the ability, like, something more or less unique to Ice types is, is that they can set Aurora Veil up. I think it's pretty valuable, and... Um, should not be overlooked and i think it helps the whole type like the whole type benefits from that one move because it's mostly only ice pokemon who can use it and you know they're trying with ice like they made Dur galarian dermanitan which is pretty powerful to say the least however it's not that great in doubles but yeah when ice has help from other typing like like i said ground or water or fairy it can be okay but for the most part it needs to help like it doesn't function on its own okay next up is normal normal is kind of a weird type because it doesn't hit anything for super effective damage however uh, it also it doesn't have any resistances it's only immune to ghost is it's only like defensive t uh, tactic but it's also like only weak to fighting so basically it's just a very it's a very neutral type you know it's a very normal type um it's weird but i think i'm gonna put normal in the b tier uh, i definitely think that it's a pretty good type overall like the thing is it doesn't hit many things for uh, like offensively however despite that there's a lot that it can do um let's see so notable normal types are um, Mega Kangaskhan, that's a big one. Porygon 2, Snorlax. Uh, Smeargle. Ugh. Let's see. Rajigajigas. Braviary, though it doesn't, it, that functions more as a flying type than a normal type. Diggersby, you can make a case for. Um, let's see. And then did they add any new one in Generation 8? Uh, Noctowl, Chichino, Ndidi, yeah, I think Normal's a, f a pretty fair B-tier pick, um, the best Normal type Pokemon take advantage of good natural bulk and then kind of abuse the fact that they don't have weaknesses, Porygon 2 and Snorlax are the biggest examples of that, Snorlax only having, like, Snorlax and Porygon 2 are only weak to the fighting type, um, so actually Mega Kangaskhan as well, like, pure Normal types are actually pretty nice because, if you have a way to either increase your damage output, so like Snorlax's Belly Drum and Kangaskhan just hits really hard anyway, and it had Power Punch back in the day as well. So if you can increase your damage output, then you don't need to be hitting things for super effective, but you can still take advantage of the fact that you have very like you only have one weakness. Um, and yeah, the oh I didn't talk about resistances. It uh, it's immune like Ghost is immune to it. Rock and Steel both resist it. Um, 
that's it. Yeah. So three three resistances. Um. So yeah, basically, good normal types have traditionally taken advantage of the fact that like they are very naturally bulky, and so they don't necessarily need to worry about getting hit for super effective damage from anything, and so. They either kind of outlast the opponent with bulk, so it's just something that Porygon 2 will do, or even though it's not, like, hitting things for super effective stab damage, although it did run good coverage moves, like, with recover and just the amazing natural bulk and almost no weaknesses, it was able to stick around in the field and maybe not one hit KO, but two or three or four hit KO things while it was still around, um, which is very viable, and also provide good support with uh, speed control and trick room. Um, or you have Pokemon like Kangaskhan and Snorlax, which are bulky, but have the ability to boost their offensive stats or just immediately exert offensive pressure um, with moves like Double Edge or even Return. Uh, and therefore, like, yeah, exert pressure without having weaknesses and be able to launch two or three attacks before, like without going down because of their good natural bulk. And then, yeah, the fact like that you have good damage output anyway. So overall, I think normal is solid. Um, it's just like, a, yeah, just like a very solid type. I feel like it's very balanced and very fair. I like normal types. Um, they also get interesting when you give them dual types, like Braviary, for example, and Indeedy is a really interesting one because in the current metagame, you have an immunity to Ghost, which as a Psychic type is actually pretty valuable, and with Follow Me, you force Dragapult to play mind games, which I think is interesting personally, so, um, yeah, like Indeedy, Indeedy is a great example of a Pokemon that takes advantage of Normal's, like, one resistance in Ghost, and yeah, it covers the weakness as well. Basically, you trade a, you trade a Ghost weakness for a Fighting Neutral. Yeah, as a Psychic type, and that's like a pretty valuable trade, I think. So, I think a DD is like a great example of a Pokemon that um, that takes advantage of normal type as a dual type. There's not that many more, in my opinion. Like, you could argue maybe Diggersby, like Noxowl. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about Smeargle because it doesn't function as a Pokemon of the type anyway. Like, yeah, Smeargle's just like a typeless Pokemon for all intents and purposes. Okay, Poison is another really hard one. Um... Poison's really hard. Let's look at the users. The thing is that, like, Poison was definitely a, a D-tier type before Fairy types, but now it gets a little trickier. So you have users like Gengar, Weezing, Galarian Forum, Venusaur, Amoongus. Is there anything else good? I guess you could argue maybe the Nidos are good. Alolan Muck was not bad. Gengar we talked about. Crobat was not bad. Ah, oh, man. So poison. Okay, let's talk about what it does first of all, because that's the, that's the hard part, um, or that's that's the easy part. Poison. It resists fairy, which is very good. It resists um, fighting. It resists bug. Those are all the resistances. It's super effective against fairy. It's super effective against grass. Um, it's super effective against. Is that it? It's only super effective against fairy and grass. Okay. Is that really right? They had poison was only super. That can't be right. That can't be right. Tell me that's wrong. I must be missing something. I need the type chart in front of me. I'm I'm literally gonna Google this. I must be missing something. Poison. Oh my God! This thing was so bad. Holy cow! Okay, yeah, it's only super effective against grass and poison, um, or grass and fairy. Uh, it's not very effective against poison, um. Rock, steel, ground. I think that's it. Um, did I say ghost? It's not very good as ghost either. Um, here's the thing. So poison, like it hits fairy, which is one of the best types. And it hits grass, which is obviously like somewhat commonplace. Although, yeah, a lot of grass types are like either immune or resistant. Cartana, Ferrothorn, Venusaur, um, uh... Amoongus, etc. There's not that many pure grass types that, like, take poison damage. Um, but the ability to hit fairies is very valuable. Um, it's very, very valuable. Basically, it's not going to be an A tier type. I'm just debating if it's B or C. I'm also not convinced we're going to have a C tier. A lot of the users are really good, and Max Ooze is a good type. However, I feel like poison is a bad type carried by a few good Pokemon. Um, that's my opinion, so I'm putting it in C tier. Kind of like ice type. I feel similar about ice types actually, where ice is a bad type carried by a few good Pokemon. Venusaur and Amoongus and Gengar are all really good Pokemon. Um, although Gengar really needed the Mega Stone to be top tier, in my opinion. It's funny because Poison in some metagames feels essential. Like Mega Gengar won the World Championships in the Xerneas metagame, or in one of the Xerneas metagames. Um, though it didn't win in the next one. Um, but even still, like I feel like 
there's so many poison type pokemon that just aren't viable and like a poison type pokemon has to be really above and beyond in order to get usage like mega beedrill didn't get usage nitto king no queen technically yes they've both won no N nitto queen got second out of national nitto king won a national but okay first of all nitto king won a national before fairy types were introduced and like it was definitely a niche pick. You have Pokemon like Crobat who have seen usage, but they didn't really see usage as a poison type. They saw usage as like a Tailwind Haze bot, Super Fang bot. Um, Muck was good in 2017, but once the more format opened up, it didn't see as much play. Galarian Weezing isn't seeing a ton of play, though I do think it has potential. Yeah, like Amoongus was used as a defensive poison type. Nihilego was actually pretty good. I don't know. This is a tough one. I'm going to leave it in C tier, but I feel like it could be a B tier type as well. It's tough, honestly. Like... I would say if Poison was super effective against any other type, it would definitely be C tier, but because the type it's super effective against is um, Fairy, you could make a case for it being B tier. Poison just feels so much worse to me than like any of the types in B tier, though, so I'm going to leave it in C tier. Next up, we have Psychic. I think Psychic is, well, let's think. Psychic is um, super effective against Fighting, Poison. Is that it? Okay. Uh, it's not very effective against... It's immune to... Well, Dark is immune to it. Um, Steel resists it and Psychic resists it. And then um, it resists... Fighting. Psychic. Is that it? Yeah. Did I already say it's weak to Ghost? Weak to Ghost, Dark, Bug. That's it. It's a weird type. I think it's a probably a B tier type. Um, we've seen bulky psychic users thrive throughout the years. Um, there's a lot of good psychic types. I'm not going to lie. Necrozma had a lot of usage last year. Lunala had a lot of usage last year. Solgaleo was not bad. Tepalile was a great offensive psychic type. Um, Meowstic is a good support type. Reuniclus got second at a regional. Gothitelle has won the world championship twice as a bulky psychic type. Cresselia has won the world championships three times, I think, as a bulky psychic type. Um... Bronzong won the world championships as a bulky psychic type. Latios won the world championships as a bulky type, as a psych, as an offensive psychic type. Metagross won the world championships three times as a psychic type. This is an A tier type. Um, Gardevoir won the world championships as an offensive psychic type. Almost every like executor got second at the world championships as a psychic type. Slowbro and Slowking both have had good showings at the world championships. Um, Slowking actually got top four twice at the world championships. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's honestly a good type. Mewtwo as one of the legendary psychic types that was allowed, has, like, usage at, in, at the World Championships. Hatterini's really good. Me and Didi's really good. Yeah, I feel like me Psychic is an ATR type, the more I look at it. It's a very spammable type. Like, if something doesn't resist it, a lot, like, which many Pokemon do not, um, it's just, like, solid neutral damage. Almost looks like special, uh, psychic types are special attackers, so they're having physical, like, Sogaleo and Gallade. But for the most part, it's, it's a special attacking type. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just think it's. I think it's a very. It's a very good type. Um, they're normally special attackers. Like I said, they can be. Phys they can be bulky or they can be defensive. Um, they're bulky or offensive, depending on how you want to train it. And some Pokemon are both. Like Pokemon like Reuniclus, in my opinion, function as both bulky and they're still offensive sweepers. Hatterini falls into the same category. Um, <clears throat> many Pokemon get Trick Room. Many Pokemon get Speed Control, who are psychic type. Um, Meowstic is a good defensive Pokemon. Gothitelle is a great, like, defensive Pokemon. I don't know. There's a lot of really good Psychic types. Bronzong. There's a lot of really good Psychic types. I think you could maybe make a case for S tier, but I think typing alone, you wouldn't, like, have it. But yeah, Psychic types are great. Next up, we have Rock. I feel like Rock, I'm going to put lower than people expect. Let's take a look here. Rhyperior, Tyranitar, Terrakion, Colossal. Mm, okay, I can't put it that low. Let's see. Aerodactyl... Okay, so there's a lot of bad rock types, Stack Attack and Nihilego, but their good rock types are really good. I'm gonna put it in B tier. I think that's fair for it. Um, rock is a weird type. It is weak to uh, nothing up here actually. It's weak to fighting, grass, steel, water, um, ground. Oh, that's ground. This is rock. Ground. Oh, it is weak to something up here. Um, it is super effective against fire, bug, ice, flying. Flying is a big one. Fire is a big one. And it is resisted by um, ground, fighting, steel. I think that's it. Yeah, ground, fighting, steel. It's a good type for sure. Um, a lot of the users are very exceptional Pokemon. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, but I feel like a lot of the like a lot of the reason why the Pokemon the, the good rock types are good are for 
reasons like outside the typing the first of all the best ones are all dual type um stack attack and nihilego tyranitar terrakion and rhyperior are all dual type pokemon so they take advantage of something in addition to rock rock slide is one of the best moves in the game being able to just like have a chance to flinch things is broken um these pokemon fall into a couple different categories so first of all you can divide them by fast and slow um you can have slow Pokemon like Tyranitar, Stack Attack, and Rhyperior, but you also have fast offensive rock types like Nihilego and Terrakion. Um, some of these rock types are very bulky. Tyranitar and Rhyperior are some of the bulkiest Pokemon ever. Uh, Rhyperior, thanks to Solid Rock, making it stick around for a long time, and Tyranitar, thanks to Sandstream, boosting its special defense and already incredible base stats. Um, Stack Attack is also like maybe the highest base defense in the game. It's pretty close to it, if, if not. Um, with base 211 defense. Though it's not like the bulkiest Pokemon, it still has great natural bulk. Then you have Pokemon like Nihilego and Terrakion, who have good, great speed stats and solid offensive typings as well, allowing them to, um, yeah, just kind of decimate through unprepared opponents. Terrakion had, like, the, both those Pokemon had ways to boost their offensive stats as well, with Terrakion having both Swords Dance and Beat Up uh, strategies being pretty popular with it in certain metagames, and Nihilego having Beast Boost. Um, Nihilego is also especially interesting because it's a special attacker, even though most rock types are physical. You also have some Pokemon with some usage, like Aerodactyl, um, who was mostly a support Pokemon, though could be used offensively as well if you wanted to Mega it. Almost a Dynamax. Um, there's a lot of rock types that go unappreciated like and not really used, like Lycanroc, Minior, Diant, oh, Diant is not legal, Carbink, Aurorus, Tarantrum, Barbarical, or Archaeops, Caracosta, Crustle, etc., etc. Jigglypuff was actually good as well in 2017. Um... There's a lot of rock types that don't see love, so I feel that's why it's a B tier and not an A tier for me. Like, basically, the good rock types are really good, but the majority of rock types are not that good. So, um, I think that speaks more to the typing. I think that's, that's like why it's like just like a solid typing because the typing it doesn't do enough on its own, but given the right circumstances, it can be great. I would say rock is probably an upper B tier. Although honestly, like a lot of the Pokemon in the B tier, I feel like are pretty fair here. So, um, yeah. Next up, we have Steel. Steel is also an S tier type. Uh, Steel is just so important. Um, originally, the only Dragon Resist, um, now one of the only Fairy Resist. It's always been one of the best typings in the game, despite a nerf to it. Um, Steel types are generally pretty good. Magnezone has seen usage. Steelix has seen usage. Caesar has seen usage. Mawile was very good for a long time. Uh, Metagross has won the most World Championships, or it's tied for the most with Cresselia, Snorlax, and. What's the last one? Don't remember. Um, Casalia Snorlax. What was the last one? Something else. Salamence. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bronze Lung's really good. Lucario's seen some usage. Dialga's not bad. Heatran's amazing. Extra's really good. Escavalier won a world championship. Well, won two if you count juniors. Um, Ferrothorn's really good. Bisharp is good. Durant is good. Aegislash is good. Klefki is good, Togunamaru is great, Celesteel is good, Solgaleo is good, Kartana is good, Necrozma is good, Stack Attack is good, they're all good, they're all good, almost every Steel type has some use, like, has seen use and done well. Um, Steel originally, like I said, was the only Dragon Resist, and now it's one of the two Dragon Resists, and it's also now only one, one of the only Fairy Resists, Fairy, Fire, or Steel, Fire, and Poison, um, and Poison types typically, other than Amoongus, aren't used defensively, so, yeah, um, Steel is really good, it's, it's only weak to Fire, Fighting, and Ground. Um, it's super effective against Fairy, it's super effective against Rock, it's super effective against, uh, Fairy, Rock, Ice, I think that's it, um, and it resists, it has so many resistances, it resists Fairy, Dragon, Rock, Steel, uh, Ice, po it's immune to Poison, it resists Bug, and it used to resist Ghost and Dark as well, fun fact, so, it was kind of broken back then, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I've kind of made a case for Steel types, they're very strong, um, they're great defensive tools, but they can also be used offensively. Some can be can do both, like Celesteela won US Internationals last year, being both defensive and offensive. Like, good natural bulk and then trained offensively to allow it to fulfill both roles. Um, let me actually... Hang on. I want to see how many years of Steel-type has won the World Championship. Okay, Steel-type wins in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012... Does not win in 2013. Does not win in 2014. Arash and Seijin going off the handle. Uh, 2015 it wins. 2016 it wins. 2017 it wins. 2018 it wins. 2019 it... It wins. Okay, it won the World Championships every year except for 13 and 14. Um, oh, wait, no. Arash and he trained. It won in 13. Okay, Seijin is the only player ever to win the World Championships without a Steel-type. With Garchomp, Pachirisu, Talonflame, Gardevoir, 
um, Gyarados, and Gothitelle. And honestly, the steel types that were used in the top cut, we have five Mega Mawile, two Mega Lucario, and one no steel type. And so I think because he used Gyarados as his Mega, he like, there weren't, the, it appears that people didn't really run steel types. Oh, Aegislash. Aegislash was used two times. Um, so yeah, I guess like it didn't fit his team composition. So only one year a steel type did not win the world championships. Um, that's even, even after the introduction of fairies, fairies only won one. So uh, from 14 to 19, it wins in 14, doesn't win in 15, doesn't win in 16, wins in 17 with three, and then does not, wins in 18 as well. So yeah, even though like fairies have been around for less time, they still didn't win two of the world championships they were present in. So steel is, in my opinion, it's one of my favorite types, uh, but it's also one of the best types. So yeah, steel is really good. Okay, next up we have water. I'm really torn. Water is either A or S. Let's take a look at the water types. Like, so we have Blastoise who's good, Golduck who was good, um, Slowbro and Slowking who were pretty good, um, Gyarados who's amazing, Vaporeon who's okay, Azumarill who's good, Politoed who's good, Slowking who's okay, Suicune who's good, Kingdra who's okay, Swampert who's okay, Ludicolo who's good ish, Pelipper who's bad, Milotic who's great, um, Kyogre who's amazing, Empoleon is meh. Uh, Rotom Wash is great. Jellicent's good. Greninja's okay. Primarina's really good. Ar Ar Araquin is good. Tapofini's really good. Is it A or S tier? Chat, what do you think? Let's see if I miss any new ones. Gigantamax Lapras I missed. That's really good. Gastron's pretty good this format, though I don't normally like it. Inteleon is good. Dracovish. It's, it's S tier. It's got to be S tier, right? It only has two weaknesses in um, grass and electric. Uh, it's super hard against fire, super hard against ground, rock. Um, yeah, and it's resisted by um, grass, water. Is that it? Just grass and water? No, a dragon, a dragon. Grass, water, and dragon. And then it resists. I already said it's fire, steel, water, ice. Yeah, it has. It's just an amazing. It's an amazing type. Um, it's so it's actually so good it's ridiculous um water is a lot of water uh, type users are naturally bulky which helps them a lot um but they, it's also a really good offensive type and it has one of the best offensive moves in the game and scald scald being a no drawback 100 percent accurate 80 damage 80 percent damage Yeah, 80 base damage for a uh, move that does not miss and has a 30% chance, I think, to leave the target with a burn, scalds will burn, which is broken. Like, that's an amazing, amazing attack. Um, water types can function in rain. They also don't need rain. The resistance to water is very nice because it's, like I said, one of the few types um, that resist it. And a lot of them are dual types as well, like canceling out some of their weaknesses. So popular dual type Pokemon are Rotom Wash, who's only to grass. Gastrodon, same thing. Dracovish is, doesn't have a weakness to electric or grass and only is weak to dragon and fairy. Um, yeah, um, Araquanid, which canceled out the grass weakness in exchange for bug weaknesses, Jellicent, who actually only adds weaknesses, <laughs> um, yeah, like, I don't know, and, and water types, like, they can be bulky, but they can be offensive as well, like, already this season, for example, we see bulky Rotom Wash, and we see offensive Rotom Wash, we see bulky Milotic, and we see Life Orb Dynamax Milotic, you know, we see bulky Lapras, we don't see that many, well, we see Weakness Policy Lapras, we see, you know, um, Light Clay Lapras, um, what else? Yeah, water is an amazing type. And I, yeah, I f and Primarina, for example, is an incredibly offensive Pokemon who does so much damage. Tapu Fini was one of the best Tapus in um, past generations. It wins worlds in 17 and 19. So, yeah, the water type Tapu wins as many as, the, as Tapu Coco, who also wins too. Um, so, yeah, overall, it's a, it's a really good type. Okay, flying. This is what the last one. This has been longer than I intended, but I don't like to rush it. Let's look at the users. We have. Um, a couple of really good flying types. Charizard, Gyarados. Oh my god. Noctowl. Pelipper's bad. That's that's negative points. Togekiss, Driftblim, Braviary, Halucha, Mandibuzz. Oh my god. Corvid. This is an A tier type. This is 100% an A tier type. Like, a lot of the, the thing about flying is that almost all of. Wait. Almost every single flying type is dual type, and that helps a lot. Um, every single flying type legal in VGC 2017 is dual type, except for Silvalli so flying. Rookity and Corvusquire. So every fully evolved flying type is dual type in 2017. And although there are some like pure flying types in past generations, like Tornadus, um, who's all usage, it's rare for sure. Uh, Aerodactyl, Mega Pinsir, Zapdos, Crobat. There's so many good flying types. Yeah. 
flying is actually really good um let's talk about why so even though it's resisted by steel and rock um and electric it's super effective against grass fighting uh bug hmm. yeah okay here's the thing flying is the is one of the two types that actually resist ground which is kind of uh valuable like gra oh it's one of the three types uh, grass bug and flying are the ground resistances and that's like kind of valuable when you consider that flying is actually an immunity and not a resistance um flying is able to hit a lot of these types for neutral fairy water dragon fire ghost ground psychic dark normal poison ice like it hits almost all it hits all of those for neutral and then it's like it's only resisted by rock and steel and electric um so being able to hit the whole cast like except for three for you know neutral to, and like hit a decent chunk of them for super effective as well and fighting grass and bug I don't know that's like pretty valuable but yeah i think the real thing about flying types is that they it functions really well as a dual type i wonder i'm just curious how many how many flying types do you think of one worlds doesn't win in eight wins in nine with salamence wins in does not win in 10 wins in 11 with thunderous does not win in 12 looks like about half so far 13 tornadus 14 talon flame 15 thunderous and landerous um 16 rayquaza 17 celesteela 18 salamence it wins almost every year after the fact if we discount eight and nine which, you know, one in, one in nine and not in eight. Uh, but eight was only four Pokemon, which is kind of unfair. And it was two Steel. It was two Steel Psychic and two Pure Normals. So that's kind of unfair for typing. So yeah, wins in nine, does not win in 10, and then wins every other year after that, except for 12. Okay. Okay, yeah. So it wins the World Championships a lot, is what I'm trying to say. Um, Thunderous and Landorus, two of the greatest Pokemon of all time. Um, maybe great is the wrong word, but two of the most powerful Pokemon of all time. Yeah. I think those are... Yeah, I think Flying belongs in the A tier. Um... Yeah, so this is my final tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was interesting. I know, like, probably it wasn't as technical as maybe you wanted. Some people wanted, but, like, it's hard to talk about these things objectively. So I just did my best. Um, but, yeah, anyway, uh, that's my final tier list. Let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything. Um, this is definitely not, like, perfect, but it's the best I could do. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what other content you want to see from me. Um, and I'll see you next time. Peace.